I think that's another thing. Uh, as or even if, uh, not to cut you off on that, but the filmmaking part, um, getting people to commit. I guess. What do you think about that part? Of, like you know, just because it it takes a lot of people to get it, you know, get a production done in general. Mm-hmm. You know, it can't just be me. It can't just be you. It takes a lot of independent. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, what do you think about even getting people? To come in on a production like that, what is that? It, it's very hard to do, uh, and I get it right. because no one's getting paid for it. So, <laughs> I get it. That's a fact. Um, there's even been shoots where where there is pay and people don't show. Maybe it's not enough for what they got going on, but it's a challenge. Uh, I think it's it. I, it's very hard to get people extras on indie films. Our type of indie films right. where there's like zero money you yeah, know all I mean? the money's going to the production basically yeah, everything nobody's so. getting anything right i get it so when people do show it's it's that much more of a blessing to me you know and, and we made it work a matter of fact the dj showed up our original dj right and he had an emergency and he had to he had to bounce out and then we made it work with tony with the, the tony yeah, yeah. So. had a whole nother deal which kind of spun the story off which actually made it the story a little bit more in depth remember because yeah the original part time we shot that uh, the original DJ, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now, but the original DJ we had him come out. Thomas Robles. <laughs> oh, is that right? It? right. Uh, I don't remember. I was really don't. I got to go back. That was G13's buddy. Oh no no no! I take that back. Thomas was the guy was the original guy that day. The guy we had before that with the long hair. Yeah, that's what it was. What was I forgot? Cat's name. I forgot the yeah, cat's yeah, name. Yeah. But I remember um, the story comes in where he doesn't want to do it. Right. And then he comes back. He doesn't want to do it. Right. Right. But then we end up just cutting it. Where he doesn't want to do it, which kind of made the film, right? I won't say a little more dangerous, but it made it look a little bit more. I oh, mean, it wasn't yeah. in the script, but it was something that kind of worked out in balance. I thought. Yeah, I'm a big believer in layers. That was another layer. It wasn't intentional, but right. layers to films. Like, what kind of shoes does he wear? Even though we don't see the shoes, I mean, stuff like that. Layers, layers. So we built on the loss of the original DJ. We built that extra scene at Urgence, right. right? Where we killed off that DJ. Right. Is that what we, that's we, right. Yeah, yeah, we, we killed we off that, that DJ. That's, another, that's right. Okay, right. right. And that was another layer. Another layer you know what I mean? That it. was unintentional. So, I didn't think about um, that, actually. So altogether, there was going to be, there was three DJs, There three right? DJs. Yeah. And, and then, well, yeah. I don't get whatever, but. Uh, and we had him come back, didn't we? And say he's not down to be involved in the, in the, in the next one. So that cleaned that up. You're right. It kind of, that's why right. I said that. That end, they unintentionally kind of cleaned right. up why he didn't show up for whatever. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay, hold on, let me see. Shout out to Phil Wang, too, for letting us do the voiceovers. Oh, yeah, I'm getting to that yeah. one, too. So. so why is the sound experience important to you in the film? This is just my opinion. But sound, like if I'm watching um, the Avengers Endgame and the sound is, is bad, but the shots are beautiful, I'm more prone to not watch it. Mm. If it's the other way around, you know, I'm more prone to stick around and listen to the audio than I would then to stick around and watch bad, bad, bad video. Right. So I think sound is, I mean, I don't know which one's more important. They're, they're probably even keel for me. I, I'd like to have good sound. Um, even setting up this, remember we had some right. problems here, but sound is very important. Like every sound is meant to be there um, by design. So if we can have good sound, we might not have the resources to get, Great locations, right? Um, great effects, whatever the case is. But we have the opportunity to make the sound as good as it can be. Right. So I have, so that was the first time learning this. So mm-hmm. I was, when Under the Underground was probably my first experience of really right. getting a film in. Um, you taught me about the sound. Right? You said, okay, sound, mm-hmm. you know, somebody. And I didn't notice it because I go on YouTube. Right. Somebody, sometimes those sound will be, you know, whatever, right. I'm out of there immediately. And I didn't notice that. It's like subconsciously yeah. I didn't notice I was doing that. Right. But I realized that the sound was important after you there. But you add different effects besides yeah. the sound that's in there. So it's not only capturing the sound of what's happening in the moment, but you add more sound into right. it after that. Yes. And by no means am I an expert in, in sound or anything. I'm just talking from my experience. I'll add things like um, maybe an airplane flying by that has nothing to do with the story. But it's again, it's a layer. A layer of, of the of the movie that we can make happen with just sound right. you know what i mean there's an airplane outside right right, right? so um wind or the rattling of a chain that's down the hall that has nothing to do with the story to me all that's very important because it's an extension of the movie so when we shot under the underground i noticed that when we were there you were already pre-thinking of the sound Mm-hmm. During the shoot, right? Right. So is that something that you also do in pre-production? Do you actually go into pre-production thinking, 
okay, the story is, let's say, a uh, kind of espionage type of story. Yeah. So I'm going to need these type of particular sounds, or is that post? That's post. Um, but I already knew going into Under the Underground and a few other ones we did, Knuckles, another one we did called Haunt. I already know we're not using any of the sound there because right. it's, you can't control it. You know, cars driving by, people honking. So I already knew we were going to ADR all of it. And once I ADR all of it, now I can add whatever I want. You right. know, sound wise. Right, right. So I knew um, we'd go over to Phil's and do the ADR stuff. So that day of the shoot, we had that that part free, right. freed up. You know what I mean? So we can, I can sit there and go, all right, Brian, walk to the left or walk to the right. You know, during the shot, because I know it's not going to be used, right? So see, and that's the first time I noticed. See, I haven't, I, like I said, that was the first experience shooting. Yeah. So I never noticed that that was. Like, I didn't know, like, I mean, now I'm looking at the movies and I'm realizing that, okay, there's a sound program or there's right. a sound, whatever. But now, before, I never noticed that. Like, okay, even the, you know, I think there's a parts of um, doors opening and things. Like, I didn't know that that's mm -hmm. added after or, you know, you know, you know I mean, yeah. personally, I didn't notice the interest or whatever. So it's kind of interesting yeah. that filmmaking touch. Like when Ed grabbed um, Urge by the. Right. And rolled him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rolling the wheels of the chair. To the leather on the chair, to everything, so I can control all of that if I do it that way. You know what I mean? And he said, "Now ADR." So we ADR at Phil's house, correct? Correct. Phil did come the first day of the shoot. I'm not. Was that? Right? Did he? I don't remember. Probably. I think I Larry think was there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, I remember. I thought, I'm not sure. Sorry, Phil, if you weren't there the first day, but I thought you were. Uh, yeah. But on that uh, particular, so you already have the scenes cut out for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have everybody come back in, and when we go back and look at the film, and then we try to mimic that, right? Um, well, how did you learn that technique or how was that something that you came across when you were doing your just effing up, okay. messing up, messing up over and over and, and then try to get your own rhythm. Now, the stuff we did at the hotel, we probably didn't need to ADR that because yeah, we were we controlled. Yeah. So but anything outdoors or anything, even in the warehouse, just I know from past experiences, I shot at a lake, Lake Elsinore once and I had to deal with um, boats, I bet. planes. Um, water skiers. It was crazy, man. So I yeah, just try so to avoid you that. You learn after that. Right. So now, okay, I was sorry. I wasn't going to keep on the sound a little bit, but when you're going in, you pretty much going to take all sound of the video. So when we're shooting, that's not, I know we use some of the stuff. Like mm -hmm. I know, like I said, the hotel. So you already think, so are you looking at the video? It's going to be blank. It's just, it's nothing. It's yeah. blank canvas. All you're really getting is the visuals at that point. Yeah, you're editing the, the, the movie twice, essentially. Okay. And then actually a third time when you blend both sides together. So that's good. You look at it like that. That's well. At least out there, under the underground, uh, we have a short film out there. All proceeds go to making that movie a full feature film for you. So watch this video here on YouTube. We're gonna have a link in there as well. Uh, but this is actually gonna have uh, you go watch the short film. It's out now. Like I said, go check it out. All proceeds go making that a full feature. So, uh, all right. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. All right, man. Thank you. You do know rocking a mic is against the law now, don't you? Yeah, we're doing this for the passion of hip hop anyway. I say we say fuck the rules, man. The underground lives on. You've been found guilty of the Rhythmic American Poetry Act. And the penalty for that. Smoke your black ass right now.